a new contact, a new lead, someone who finds your contact form or brings your phone number off Google Maps might give you two minutes to reply before really they're going to find someone else for your business. Uh, and so you've got to contact them back as quickly as possible. If it's email, you want to get that notification reply back. If it's phone call, you've got to get back on the phone and ring them. They're moving on. It may be even too late by then. So what I want for my own contact form, what you want for yours is for you to know how to contact them immediately. And of course, you might be busy meetings asleep, heaven forbid. You want something to contact them back. So what I want and what we're going to talk about today is an automation where we will uh, receive the process, the, the request on the form. Obviously, we store it in our contact request and we're going to notify me, the human, and I'll have a chance to reply. If I haven't replied, if I haven't sent this contact a message within two minutes, then my automation will kick in and send an email for me on my behalf um, to let them know that I'm unavailable. But please, here's the calendar. Pop something in the calendar and Dr. Nick will get to you very shortly. So it's not me pretending to be me. It's, uh, it's uh, my assistant, my virtual assistant, my literally virtual assistant, my AI tag teaming uh, assistant is going to be uh, sending a message on my behalf and saying as such, offering them to at least know that we, we care, we've responded. Please put something in the, in, the, in the calendar if that's relevant. And as soon as Dr. Nick can, he'll get back to you. So we need uh, a scenario that can do that relatively complex task of not only sending an email, which is not difficult, but waiting a couple of minutes and then checking, has an email already been sent by a human? What we're going to do in this, uh, this scenario, I'm going to build it out. We're going to start with sending an email. So if you've never used make.com to send an email, we're going to do that. And then we're going to look at how might we uh, check has an email already been sent? Because the email will probably be sent you know, directly from an email account, not necessarily through some CRM. Uh, there may not be a CRM to measure. Now, ideally, the CRM would have been updated, you know, message sent. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look inside the Gmail account. Look, has this email address had an email sent to it in the last two minutes? This is not something that's uh, easily done uh, by the standard uh, Gmail uh, uh, module that comes. So we're going to look at the API for doing that. Um, and uh, by the end, you'll have a scenario that we have at Mokra for uh, making sure a bit of tag team. If I don't get back to the person within two minutes, then Trudia, this is Trudia, by the way. Uh, she'll send a message to at least move the conversation forward. If this sounds like something you want for your business, then stick around. This is going to be really good. I'm going to build this out from scratch uh, and we'll come back to it as necessary. Um, rather than flesh out a contact form for which we have a previous video, just look back at uh, videos like uh, we have one called uh, Free Free Forms, which uh, lets you create a form without using a paid form submission thing. But either way, the form is going to come in to somewhere in our make scenario with, with those details. So I put those details here in, in a set of variables. Um, we will then put them inside uh, a CRM. I'm using, Click, uh, I'm using um, uh, uh, ClickUp to, uh, to do that, but you know whatever CRM you're using is, is gonna be perfectly fine. Um, and, uh, and then the question becomes, after you've done that, and maybe you've notified people, put it in their Slack, you know, sent uh, iOS uh, notifications, for example, you there is an iOS um, thing here where you can send a push notification to a specific person's phone and pass on the details that comes up in the phone. They click on it. You can redirect them to, to click up, for example. You can do all that. And this is excellent. At that point, the clock is ticking. The person submitted the contact form. If they don't get a reply within a couple of minutes, they're, they're going to move on. And, and whoever really replies to them first, they're probably not going to keep you know, five conversations going with five different vendors uh, unless one of them lets them down. So there, there really is important that we get back to people as quickly as possible. And so um, we will at this point trigger another scenario to start that clock. Um, so what we'll do is we will, uh, I could extend this scenario out. We could just keep growing the scenario, but to keep it a little bit modular, what I'll do is we'll start another scenario for this, uh, for the Trudia, um, Trudia is just a name. There's just a Trudy, Trudy, Trudy AI. I don't know. It was just what I decided to call it. Um, uh, but that behavior we'll put in another scenario uh, and we'll need to trigger it somehow. Um, we'll use the uh, HTTP as just a way of sending a request and we'll put a webhook in here 
to trigger this other scenario. It just keeps things modular as opposed to having scenarios that grow really, really big. So um, over here, we'll start a new scenario, which will be the auto respond if necessary. And we'll activate it with a webhook. YouTube tutorial. Um, Trudia auto respond if necessary. I really would like these names to all match up. Like this webhook here and this name here and the name of this, why not? They should, they're all the same. It's, this is the purpose, all right? Anyway, um, we start that and we need to copy that address into the clipboard so we can give it to the other scenario. Click OK. Go back to our first scenario. And uh, so we're back over here. This is the scenario whereby the form is submitted. We've put the details into our CRM and we've notified a bunch of people, uh, whoever, so that, that the race is on. But then we'll also start the clock uh, to tell Trudia that she should start a, a two minute timer. Um, and we'll post that. Um, we will pass through uh, the, what do we want to pass through? We want to pass through, what we need is Trudia needs to be able to look up what the customer record was. That's what we need to be able to pass through. So we'll pass through the ClickUp um, task ID so that Trudia can pick that up. So ask Trudia to auto respond if necessary. Save that and we're, we're good to go. Um, over here, we now have um, our respond and uh, what do we need to do? We need to receive that and do something with it. So let's trigger this. We'll start this now and we'll start this one and it should save something to the CRM and then send the webhook request. This will now get received over here. Uh, this is essentially you know, true here. Uh, one of her behaviors and she receives the ClickUp task ID. So we can now build this out. Now, uh, again, you might feel like as we build this out, like why didn't I just join these two scenarios together? You can, it's just, uh, I like to modularize things a little bit so I can think about them and perhaps work on them independently of each other. Uh, let's get this back out of ClickUp. We need to get a task. And the task ID is the one we just passed through in the webhook. Rename that retrieve customer record. Just run that one more time. Of course, each time I do this, it's creating another record in the CRM. But here is the record that we created, of course. Um, and uh, it's got uh, the name was stored as task name, which is useful. Uh, the email is going to be down here under uh, various different custom fields. Um, so there's the email for that. And anything else that you want to pass through the description, the why, what is it they want to talk about. All the things that you put in your contact form, I highly recommend that you uh, store them in your CRM. Otherwise, they'll just disappear. Excuse me. So delicious. Okie dokie. So we've got a customer record and uh, we want to send an email. As I said at the start, we don't always want to send an email. We just want to send an email if a human hasn't already done it. Um, or maybe the webhook got called multiple times accidentally and we only want to send uh, one message. So we'll, we'll double check. But firstly, let's send the email and we can figure out how to not send the email. Fortunately, uh, sending an email is actually uh, relatively easy for Gmail. Um, and probably Outlook, no, Microsoft, Microsoft 365 email. And no doubt there's an SMTP one as well. That obviously it's not correct. There is not obviously an answer to that, but uh, nonetheless, um, you're probably using Gmail. So well, that works, but here we are. I'm using Gmail. Let's see what we've got. We can copy an email. We can create a draft. We can delete an email. We can mark it as red, we can mark it as unread. We can add labels, we can move an email about, we can send an email, this is the one we need, and we can iterate on attachments. What we can't do with this module is to look up what's been sent. 
We can't search, as far as I can tell, uh, through email. Uh, if anyone watching knows a way to do it without the, the way I'm about to show you, please let me know in the, the comments um, because uh, so other people know as well because uh, it's a bit of work to, to do what I wanted to do. Um, but nonetheless, it would be cool if it was a feature or send an, you know, use an arbitrary endpoint. That would be cool. Anyway, these are the ones we have here. And we need to uh, send an email. I will send it as myself um, from the contact because we didn't get an email yet, right? So this has this request came through from the form. There's no email for me to reply to. I'm sending the first email. And of course, if they put a phone number, then maybe I should have sent a text. But uh, in the form that we're talking about, there was an email. And so we will uh, we'll send an email. Uh, so there was an email address in the form. So our first point in response will be to send them an email. To whom shall we send it? Uh, fortunately, we have a custom field, which is this one. Uh, do I click up? What we got here? Um, this is the form uh, that we were talking about. So essentially, it's a standard click up uh, list with the task name. And then I added some, uh, some custom fields for an email a preferred name, and, and of course you can have other things like uh, what do you want to talk about, all those things. So these are the ones I've got. Um, and so every time every time I run that, at first, uh, every time I run this, fake new contact, it will add another row here. It's fine, leave it later. So I'm going to send this field an email. Uh, the subject line is uh, contact form, Thank you for contacting us. And content is the body. Um, so let's start with, let's just start with, with hey, uh, we'll, we'll make that better in a second. Thanks for contacting us. Dr. Nick is uh, not able to, to uh, reply at the moment. So let's move straight on to you finding spot. So I suggest we find a spot on his calendar and he'll reply back to you as soon as he then we'll uh bump it up. Uh, using tidy cow for things here, copy the link, pop that in there, and that out. Sincerely, Trudia for Dr. Nick, own personal assistant, champion. All right, so we have an email. Thank you for contacting us and haven't yet used preferred name. Well, uh, well I just want to talk about that, that in a second. Um, but let's see if this does something. Um, the, uh, what have we got? Oh, that's right. I prepared my email in advance and emptied it out. It's not as empty as it would look. My email is good for testing. Um, so let's run this again. So we'll start. Uh, this is the one that's pretending to be the form. This is the one that we're working on that will send an email happens that we'll send it from Doc Nick to Doc Nick, but that's fine. All right, so let's submit the form one more time. That saves it in the record, uh, saves it in the CRM, and asks Trudia to do something. Trudia receives that request, loads it back up from the CRM, and then sends an email. Um, and message ID, and over here we can see there's a notification, and thank you very much for contacting us. Here's the link. Lovely. A couple of things that could be nicer. I'd like that to have a name as opposed to just being the email. And we've got that preferred name to use if it's available. Let's have a look at those. Um, what have we got? I think it's under here. Show advanced settings from, so let's say it's from Dr. Nick at mockle.com. I think that is the syntax for making that look nice. Um, Cool. And we'll just save that for a moment. And uh, right, hey, 
here's the thing. You, you know, I, what I want is to find a preferred name and pop that in there. That's, they told me what their preferred name is. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of adding preferred name to form because uh, my first name, uh, I typically type Dr. Nick Williams. 900% um, of all algorithms written by everyone in the world will take the DR as my first name and they go, hey DR, and I immediately recognize uh, software <laughs> talking to me. It'd be much nicer if they said, what would you like to be called? And then tell them. So I'm a huge proponent of this. The challenge is right now is what if they didn't fill in the preferred name field? It would be empty. And so what you would get here is a space, a space comma. And that's not as nice as it could be. And I didn't like that either. So the solution is we need a function. We need a function called trim. There it is. We'll pop that in there, pop that there. And so here we have hey with no space. So there's, it says hey, then the function trim, and then the space is in here, and then preferred name. And so now if preferred name is empty, that will be space, trim of space is nothing. I think if we mouse over, yeah, so remove space characters at the start or end of text. So if text is blank, that becomes nothing. That would be excellent. Let's test that out. Um, we've got preferred name. We'll just make that blank. Do that and start start Trudia scenario. We'll start submitting the form. That didn't work because it needs a name. All right, full name Williams. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so the task name will be full name, which needs to be re that's required. Um, and preferred name will go into the preferred name field. Let's run that one more time. Okay, that passed. That's called Trudia, who is not doing anything. I'm not sure what just happened there. Let's do that again. All right, that ran, that sent an email. And let's have a look at what that email says. There it is there, hey, with no space. Looking spectacular. Uh, now let's double check that it works when I say Dr. Nick. Aha. Start that scenario again, run the first scenario. Over here, sends that email. And hey, Doc, oh, where's my space gone? What have I done? Trimmed the space out of existence. What have I done? Hey, goes inside. That goes inside there. Okay, so we're going to trim the hay and the name. So if now if the name's empty, it'll be hay. Forgiveness is appreciated. Um, let's run this. Run that. Okay, that looks excellent. Let's, uh, what have we got? No, not you. Again, let's change it and get rid of the preferred name and check that this works. Running, running, running. New name is Hay with space. Fantastic. Okay, so we will correct, I just forgot. So the trim goes around A, but not with. Um, so now we have the flexibility of whether or not that is a preferred name. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. You can all go. Okie dokie. We have now uh, sent the email. Okay, so now we, we, if you've never uh, used make.com to send an email before, you're now uh, good to go. So that's pretty exciting. But next, we now want to wait. We don't want to necessarily send an email straight away. We wish to let the human beings have a chance to reply first. Uh, and then send it. So a couple of ideas that we have here. One is the waiting. 
waiting is relatively easy for small amounts of wait time. We can throw in here, there is a sleep option, and we could put in here 120 seconds, just two minutes. Uh, we won't because that would add two minutes every time we practice. So we'll just put that as one for the moment. Um, dummy sleep, boom. Sleep, 120 seconds. Okay, we'll fix that later before we go live. Um, and I have never renamed this, which makes me sad. Uh, Trudia sends email. Pretty committed to this naming thing. Human. Okay, so now uh, we've added one feature, which is that um, when the form is submitted, Trudy doesn't send the email until like two minutes later. But that's not exactly what we want. What we want is to Trudy to wait 20, uh, two minutes and then check did anyone actually send them an email already so that she doesn't double up? I think this is going to be uh, pretty interesting. So I'm just going to make some space and then we'll talk about how we're going to do it. What we want to do is to ask Gmail this question. Did we contact this person? Uh, did we contact this? Where's custom fields there? Did we contact this email? in the last two minutes, um, or more specifically, since they contacted us. Not ever, not did we, you know, let's, you can do this however you want. One of the great things about doing Make and any of this stuff, rather than buying a templated, you know, custom built software is you can make these decisions. I've made the decision that if someone contacts us by the form, that's fine, we uh, can just ignore it and uh, ignore all the previous emails and just ruin the conversation. But we want to know, did they send an email uh, since they've contacted us? The way we want to do this uh, is that we'd like to ask the Gmail uh, API. And the Gmail API uh, involves reading stuff or asking ChatGPT, uh, which is highly, highly recommended. It's a top idea. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use this API to uh, contact Gmail's API on behalf of me and email owner to ask it, did I send any emails to a certain email address since the timestamp of two minutes ago? So we need to build timestamps. We need to figure out all this other stuff. Uh, in order to save time and money, I will copy and paste this idea from here and we'll talk about it. Add a module and it's an HTTP module and in order to make these API calls to the Gmail API, very sensitive emails, not as sensitive as sending an email, but you know, it's, it's still a very personal um, thing. It's uh, we're gonna use the OAuth2 request. And I've already set up the Gmail, Google Gmail. Um, I think it's a little out of scope on exactly how to do that in this particular video. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I will include the link to uh, this page uh, in the show notes. Uh, on how to set it up. They've got lots and lots of, of notes on how to do this. Um, and if you're struggling, I can, I can make another video uh, afterwards on how to set up uh, OAuth to access Gmail. Uh, and if, like I said, save a little bit of time to uh, this video on how to set that up. Okay. Um, now, so we're gonna pass this email. This is the one that we wanna pass in. Um, and uh, what we need now is to ask it, have we sent it to that, uh, sent anything to that person that is there. Now, so that would return the question, have we ever sent anything to that person ever? And in fact, let's, let's run that now. I just set up a filter, say stop. One equals zero, it's just a handy dandy way of, say it's handy dandy, except it doesn't say stop, there it is. Uh, so now we will uh, call that, um, uh, Count previous email sent. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. We've got a zero, we've got this, um, and maybe we can just run this module only. This one, yeah. pop that in there, Let's run this. And it says that I've never sent this email. It says I've never sent this person and email ever, okay? Uh, 
click on parse true highly recommended a free feature always worth worth clicking on um now it turns all that data into a nice little uh, bundle object that we can reference you can see it's equals zero so now what we could do is set up this though we can say uh if first email now we come here we go result size estimate is equal to change this to a numerical comparison equal to zero so if this is the first email we've ever sent uh, this would be true and only then would we bother sending this email um, but it's a little strange since i've got lots of emails to this person I'm not 100 percent sure that this is working um, I think what we've got is the problem is that I've got a plus in here. Pluses are not standard characters. So we, uh, in fact, we're lucky that I've tested with a plus. Um, what we need to pop in here is to encode it so that that plus gets turned into something a little safer. Pluses mean something in the URL. Um, so let us encode the URL. Okay, so we'll wrap, we'll wrap the email from the person, which may have a plus in it, in this encode URL. We will now run this again. Let's see what it comes up with this time. And now we get a more accurate answer uh, that we've sent them six emails already, which is about true. If we select all of these and delete them and run this again, Dun, 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 dun. None. Aha. And so uh, we should now, if first email, send this person an email. This is looking spectacular. Uh, let's test this. Uh, we'll now we go pretend that we're submitting the form. Go back over here. It is finding that there are zero emails, so it is the first email. So this uh, this uh, filter was satisfied, and we sent them an email. Okay, on this this occasion, it was Trudy that sent the email, not me, a person, but someone used this account to send that uh, person an email. So now what happens if we run this again? If you're following along, you should know that nothing will happen. And you can see that we did not send an email the second time because uh, we have previously sent this person an email as we deleted it. Um, so that's looking fantastic. That's, that is so close to what we want, what I wanted. Now, what is wrong right now is um, if someone, if we've ever contacted this person, if I've ever contacted this person before and they submit a contact 10 years ago, then uh, Trudy won't send anything. And that might not be what this person wants. They might have used the contact form forgetting that they'd an email from us once before. So, uh, what we want instead is to check, have we sent any emails to this person since they contacted us via the form? Now, where is that piece of information? Uh, I'm going to use this date created. So I'm going to use the timestamp of when we put their details in our CRM. That seems handy dandy. Um, and let's get rid of that. Watch this up here or not. Um, and uh, so now we need to figure out how to add that here um, to this question and messages. Uh, I think it was here. So it's, so it says space um, in a URL, and we don't put spaces in URLs. We put a plus. Uh, I don't know why. Sometimes you might see uh, plus, or you might see percentage twenty. Um, either of those is sort of encoded as a space. Um, so I'm not going to do the space. I just feel wrong about it. But I do want this uh, after. So I want to search. Have I sent emails to that person after two minutes ago or whenever the contact record was created? Um, so uh, plus after, and this is what we had here before. Okie dokie. Um, so plus after, and then I need a timestamp. Uh, I'll show you what's wrong. We'll figure out how to fix it. 
Um, what I, you know, what would be lovely, just spectacular, is if I could find the content, the created date. I could do that, and uh, that worked. It doesn't, but it would be. I don't, you know what? Let's just check it first because maybe I got things wrong the first time around. Um, let's run this module only. Uh, let's run this. Let's run this. And it found zero. Maybe it does work. Maybe I just had it wrong the first time. I had this whole other solution. You know what? Okay. This looks like it's working. Let's, uh, that's cool. Okay. Um, let us now extend this out to uh, 20 seconds. Bit of a race against the clock here, isn't it? Um, and let's just prepare an email to this person. Quick, I, ha. All right, I'm getting things ready. So we're gonna, we're gonna pretend the person sent an email, the human will reply, and Trudia will not do anything. I've got 20 seconds to do this because that sounds exciting. So this is now sleeping for 20 seconds and uh, uh, let's go. So send and I didn't start this. Oh, so close. Oops. Yes, yes, yes. Very clever. All right. Go away. You go away. It's two. Ah, all right. All right. All right. Start you. No, wait for you. Send to you. Send. Waiting for 20 seconds. And then when the 20 seconds is up, you will fetch the record, look in the email. And this is the longest 20 seconds. I'm beginning to be skeptical of how long 20 seconds. Or how many words I can. I'm just sending an email. So, I am now not trusting this format. Um, because it shouldn't, you know. She shouldn't have sent anything because I sent this. What? Tell you what. Let's just check that one more time. S3. Okay. Let us, now that we know how long 20 seconds is, and you might say, well, Nick, 20 seconds is always the same amount. And I can say, it's not when you're pressing record on a video. Um, let's send this one more time. This is now done. Now we'll send this. Ah! Don't use existing data. Seconds. What have you been up to? I appreciate it. If you found something productive to do with the 20 seconds allocated to you in this video, please let me know. Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not satisfied that this is, uh, no, let's see, there's still more done something. Uh, I think I, I, I'm unsatisfied with this idea that I can do this. Um, and what I had to do uh, was to convert it to a timestamp. And the way we do that is with format date and X. So let's do that here. Um, formats, date, X, oops, semicolon X. Um, which will convert the date object into a timestamp string number um, and everything will be happier after that. Dun, 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 dun. Let's just check that this works at all. No. Wait for new data. Excellent. 20 seconds was totally unnecessary. But again, you should use it for something. Wash the dishes, get the trash out. There's a lot you can do with 20 seconds. I can say that sentence a second time. Okay, 
that sent the text message. Lovely. Now, test four. Geordi. Um, let's wait for new data. Send that. It's now in the send. I, I'm not, I don't feel bad about having said 20 seconds. The only thing I appreciate is how efficient I was at sending an email. Success. Success in that we didn't send an automated email. So to recap what just happened there, um, because the human sent the email, because the email had already been sent in that 20 second window or two minutes or five minutes or whatever sleep you wish to put in here. Uh, we found that the email had already been sent and therefore Trudia did not send an email. So that otherwise the prospect would get two emails, one from the human and one from, from the robot. And that is uh, slightly off putting. And this is our final solution. Our final solution is to fix this back to uh, 120 to rename that as wait for human to reply or not. Uh, retrieve their record, find out how many emails we have sent that person or I have sent that person in the last 120 seconds. It's actually not 120 seconds. It is from when your customer record was created. It's gonna be 120 seconds plus or minus. And then uh, if it's no emails, great send her the reply saying, obviously Nick, Nick is uh, unavailable. Um, so here's his calendar, pop something on there and he'll get back to you soon. Uh, if you have uh, another system, just to, to wrap up, if you have a different system than this, please let me know. Uh, if you've got a YouTube video for it, let me know. Uh, I'd love to watch it. Um, I find uh, this, no doubt what I've got now will iterate and change uh, and Maybe this doesn't scale when I've got uh, multiple people on the team, uh, in which case I need a more functioning, more operate it through the CRM and probably have to check in the CRM, did this person get contact? Um, but I thought this was really interesting to actually look inside the email as a mechanism. Not every time can you start up a set of opera, uh, automations in a company and just say, hey, you all now have to use the CRM. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Sometimes you need to build your automations into the environment that you've already got. I was already using email to send emails, not a secondary or third party system. And so uh, for me right now, this was the best solution. And so, uh, but a month from now, we might iterate onto something else. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed uh, sharing these ideas. Um, and if you have any questions, if you have any ideas of where this uh, system should go, what Trudia should become, let me know. See you on the next one.